the co-investments offers uh, quite a lot to the LP. Um, one, I think for us, and it's particularly important for us, it gives us control over how we can build our portfolio. So um, alongside um, the funds, we can, we can have a lot more control in what sort of exposures, how much leverage we have in transactions, what sort of sectors and geographies, um, because our program we build 50% with primary funds and 50% with, with co-investment, so that's an important one. The next important one, which, which is often other LPs most important, is around fee reduction. Now, the co-investment can obviously be a good way of reducing fees if you're sourcing a co-investment from one of your managers and no fees are attached. But we, we have a sort of um, a, ca a caveat emptor point here, buyer beware, because you may save fees on co-investment, but if you don't do it well, you soon lose that fee advantage through bad stock selection. So the fees is, is, is an added advantage as long as you do good selection and build out the portfolio. Another sort of um, less important but also interesting one is it gives us great insight into how GPs work. So when we're doing our diligence on the, on the fund, if we've seen them in action on a co-investment, it's invaluable in how they think about deal, the quality of their due diligence, all these factors which when you do your typical fund diligence uh, is all packaged and, and nicely marketed. On a co-investment, you have real good insight. So that's also an important one. Um, I, think, I think they are probably the most important to, uh, to my mind. The traps, well that's an excellent question because there's a great interest in co-investment, as you know, from LPs. And we've seen a, a huge surge in the amount of capital going into this so-called shadow area of co-investment and sidecars. Um, so the traps are, are quite, there's quite a few. So I would say one, you need to make sure you have a properly diversified portfolio. So we all build um, a portfolio over say two or three years, which will have 30 to 40 different stocks in there. And we'll also diversify within that portfolio across different long-term structural themes. And then within each structural theme, of which we have five, we'll have other sub-themes as well. So the co-investment is very much a bottom-up exercise, but within that, in terms of risk control, uh, we like to diversify across those, those different themes, across geographies, across stage, and these are important so that it's really the portfolio construction can give you protection from poor, some poor stock selection. So don't over-concentrate. Um, make sure that you get uh, alignment. That's the other huge one with GPs. We try to stay as aligned as possible on all the commercial terms. Um, because GPs, if you're in the fund, yes, they'll be, um, they'll be friendly to you and helpful, uh, but, but make sure you have that legal alignment. Make sure you have a very strong co-investment lawyer who knows how to protect your interest as a minority investor. You cannot forget about that one. Uh, the other traps are probably um, taking as, as red a kind of a, you know, you, you need to really investigate yourself, the co-investment, in the sense of, you're not trying to redo the GP's work or second guess them, but make sure you have a clear investment view on this particular investment, this particular company, this, its market. It's more difficult around management team because you have less access, but make sure you have your own forward-looking investment view applied to this particular investment opportunity. I think co-investment is now a fundamental and uh, important part of the market. As LPs, we've been demanding more from our GPs and I see the co-investment as part of that. So it's, as an LP, we want more flexibility in how we take exposure to private equity. We want more information rights. We want more control in how we build exposure. Uh, so I think it's gonna remain an important feature. I think for the mid and large LPs, I think they're gonna continue to do quite a lot of co-investment. Um, I think for the, uh, the smaller LPs, it's more difficult, a lot more difficult, I'd say, in terms of having, being able to build the in-house team uh, and also build a sufficiently diversified portfolio. So there, I'd say they can maybe do co-investments selectively, but make sure they don't go beyond, allocate too much to an individual transaction and go slowly. Um, so I think it will remain a feature. I think that we will see if there is a downturn in the years to come, that will, the co-invest will ease off as we saw in the last downturn. Uh, but I think LPs have a real sort of appetite for this more, slightly more direct way of taking exposure. 
I think as LPs, it's important to recognise that co-investment is a genuine investment activity in its own right. And if you don't do it properly, then you can quickly uh, lose capital. And the LP as an organisation may not have the, the risk appetite, be it the trustee level, its board, to take this kind of direct exposure. So, so as an LP, you need to think carefully um, about whether they want to be taking this direct kind of exposure through co-investments, so that's one. Um, I think they also need to um, think if they have the right team because it is a different activity and different skill set from fund selection. Uh, you need uh, investment al analyst type mindset, uh, so corporate finance skills, consulting skills, um, that sort of mindset to be able to evaluate a co-investment opportunity. If you don't think you have that within your team or can add as an LP, then that's another consideration for looking potentially to outsource. I think, um, I think obviously the, the size, the LP, how much they have to deploy is an important determinant, whether they should uh, look to outsource or, or do in-house. I'd say if, if, a, if a, an LP is looking to deploy less than probably 100 million euros per annum in a programme, uh, they could do a smaller co-investment programme, but around that, below that level, I'd look to outsource and have it as an element within the programme. Um, above that, it's probably a consideration. I'd say if you're deploying more than 500 million a year, a mix of funds and co-investments, then I'd say that it's sensible to build a team and maybe also work with a partner. We, for example, have created a club where we have um, six very large global pension funds which invest alongside our main client and we as a team do the co-investment for them and we pool all the deal flow. So that's another critical point. You need, you need to be deploying large amounts of primary capital, then you need the right team, then you need to be generating a lot of deals. We generate about 400 deals a year of actual co-investments, of which you do about 20. So it's a, it's a very selective process and it's a lot of work to get those co-investments in the door and then a lot of screening. Uh, and we've delivered um, very strong returns in this environment. Uh, 2014 fund is, is running at 40% net IRR without any leverage on the fund level. Our 2013 fund is running about 30% net. And our 2011 fund is running about 25% net return. So the co-investment has been a huge, when done properly, it's been a huge driver of value uh, for, our, for our clients.